I get a lot of people asking me how we were blessed to walk away from corporate America in our early 30s. Well, listen, I don't want to keep that a secret. I want to share it with the world. And so maybe you're listening to this podcast and you're trying to figure out how do I even get started on my journey of entrepreneurship and getting to a level of freedom? Well, text the word freedom to 737-777-9909. Enter your information in. And we look forward to sharing some information with you, a proven system with smart overhead, right? That you can do part-time spare time right from the comfort of your home and have amazing mentors, coaches, and a community of entrepreneurs who are willing to support you and help you on your journey to freedom. Welcome to Code Freedom. I'm your host, Eddie Bales. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like there's got to be more to life than the reality that you see every day? Tune in weekly, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays as we crack the codes to freedom in every area of your life. Welcome to Code Freedom. This is your host, Eddie Bales, and this is episode 229, and I'm excited to have Adam Keller on the show. He is a successful entrepreneur and business owner that started a party rental company at 22 years of age, and through his hard work and dedication, grew it to a thriving business. And now, in addition to his party rental company, he has expanded into other ventures, including Airbnb and a wedding venue. So he is doing some extraordinary things out there. And we're excited to have him on the show. This is Eddie Bales, and this is episode 229. And I'm really excited to have our special guest on the show today, Mr. Adam Keller. And, you know, here's an interesting thought. The, the I was thinking about what to title this episode, and I thought, hey, freedom through parties. Did you ever think that you could have freedom through partying, right? <laughs> and Mr. Keller is definitely going to show us how to do that. So, hey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing? Absolutely. I'm incredible. I'm incredible. Glad to have you. And, um, you know, I never thought about having freedom personally through partying. So um, were you always a partying type of person? See, so a lot of people think I'm in the party business. When you were saying the title, the possible title of the episode, I was, I was like, I'm going to, cr- I'm going to crush him a little bit. Okay. A lot of people think my business is the, you know, the party. The party is the end result of what we do. We're never there for the party. We're setting up days in advance and we come after the party. And that's a big thing about like what I teach is um, a lot of people and I thought that I was in the party business, but I'm not. Uh, My business is material handling and logistics, figuring out how to get stuff, warehouse to truck, truck to site, do it all again. 90% of the money I spend is on that. Uh, And so if I figured out that that was actually my business and I start investing in that kind of stuff for material handling and logistics and efficiency, my profit soared. And a lot of people don't understand what business they're in and they're spending too time, too much time on the end product and not getting anywhere because they've never really understood what their business actually does is and where they should be spending their money. Absolutely. And so from, from my understanding is you're in the party rental business, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Still, I would still say that that's just the end result. My mm-hmm. business is I'm a moving company. Right. That's that's what I am. And if I can figure out how to move stuff better, I make more more profit. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I'm just curious, how did you get into that business? Well, I had a roommate in college. He worked for a company that had a stores in a lot of cities, and they had one where we went to school, Buffalo, New York. And so he was working there on the weekends, some nights. And so I'd go along sometimes and make money, but I was just, you know, point at that and I go do that or whatever kind of guy. Uh, but so I parlayed that. I used a reference from the owner of the company to get the summer job between school years at my local party rental company. And then I'm seeing invoices. And I'm like, this is what people are paying for this. Sh-? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'd love to start a party rental company. Uh, but instead of trying to figure things out on your own, why not take Adam's course since he's already created a blueprint for it? You can actually go to the show notes and you can click on the link and it'll take you straight where you can um, purchase this course and learn how to start your own party rental company. So if you have any questions about that, let us know and we're happy to help you. Have you ever wanted to invest in the stock market, but you just didn't know which platform to use? Well, there's an easy app that I like to use. It's simple and it's free. Uh, It's called Robinhood. And if you go into our show notes, you actually can 
click on the link, you can set up an account. Again, it's free. And when you do that, once you set it up, you actually can get a free stock just for being a Code Freedom listener. And so, uh, look, you can do short-term trading, long-term trading. Um, you can buy options. And there's so many other little different things that you can do. So take advantage of it today. And let's get you on your course to invest it. Are you serious? <laughs> so I started a few more years of school. So when I was leave, leaving school, I knew like it's a history degree. I'm going to be a history teacher or I'm going to work in a cubicle. You know, maybe I'll do that. So, but I'm going to buy some tents right now because I, at least I know how to do that. And I can at least make more money than the average 22 year old. Absolutely. Well, it's funny you say Buffalo, New York, because that's where I'm from. Oh, is it? Cool. Are that's you there fun. now? Uh, no, I'm in South Carolina now, but I actually just left being there for a week and it was a huge ice storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a night. It's supposed to be bad. There's schools, schools are going to be canceled tomorrow and stuff. I haven't looked out the window in a few hours, though. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty fascinating. Um, I'm just curious, what are some of the rewards that you found from this type of business? Well, there's freedom, but there's freedom only if you can set it up that way. For many years, I felt like I had to be involved in every single aspect. And I think a lot of business owners feel that there's like, it's hard to give up control. But I was losing so much freedom that finally, you know, I, I had to give up control. I had to hire another crew so that we're not working 12, 14 hours a day. And then eventually I gave up the office work because I was handling all the phone calls and emails even while out on the road. And then that gave up more freedom. Now I'm almost to the point where it's like, I got a 16 year old that works for me and I'm just like, go take that giant truck, fill, fill it up and go, whatever. I don't care. Just get out of here. And I'm, I'm not going. Uh, so building in the freedom when you own a business, it's actually, it needs to be conscientious because you need to hire people to replace you. So now I have way more freedom. Obviously there's a financial kind of freedom. Like I don't have money issues. I just kept reinvesting, reinvesting, reinvesting. And then one day you wake up and you never have a money issue again, as long as you continue to run your business. Okay. If you keep getting that money and you go out and partying and buying Lamborghinis or whatever, you're, you're still going to have money issues. Um, so I got the freedom now to not have to work if I don't want to get the freedom of, I can buy things if I want and owning my own business, especially like a service business where you travel. You get to see things you never would see, like places, houses on lakes through forests that you never know was there. I drove through a terrorist training town. So it's an entire town that's fake. And I was driving through it to go deliver tables and chairs to the you know military guys. Um, I've driven giant box trucks through airplane hangars and, you know, just like cool, crazy places. And you get to know your area really, really well. I don't need a GPS for at least my area. I know where things are because we drive off your day. Right. Definitely. Have you ever gone out of the country to do any, any, any gigs? No, we get phone calls for it, but I always think they're, they're spam. My friend, uh, who's out of Rochester now his his company's in Rochester. He bought these double decker tents and these 60,000 square foot tents and stuff. So I went down with him. He did Trump's inauguration. He did the Fox news and CNN. He did the media tent for that. It was a double decker tent right in the middle of the Washington Monument and the the Lincoln Monument, and so we drove down there and for a week and set these things up, and we weren't there for for pickup, but uh, yeah, we go with him some sometimes because his jobs are so huge and all over the place. Wow, pretty cool. Did did you ever think that this business would actually turn into what it has today? No, it was entirely on accident. Like you know, I'm working at gas stations and hotels working to the point where I think I'm still going to get the office job and I do get the office job, which you think is the career. And I'm figuring out how to do the tents after work or organizing schedules. So I have Friday off or something. And I was just saying yes to people. My first year, I just started with three tents and then people are like, Oh, we got something next year. Do you have tables and chairs or, you know, we're getting married. Do you have a bigger tent? This, and I would just say yes. And then that basically gave me nine months to 12 months to figure out how to do it. So then I would work all winter, 80 hours a week at various jobs, buy the stuff, do it. And then then I don't have to work 80 hours a week anymore because now the stuff's making enough money. And I say yes. And, you know, I always had at least six months to figure it out. I've said yes to some crazy things. And I know as I'm saying yes, that like, I don't know how to do this. Um, but I would say yes, because I got six months to figure it out. And then one day you just wake up. 
I just woke up and it was like, okay, I'm here. I got a big party rental company and I got no more money issues. There you go. There you go. It's funny because I always say to people, you know, say yes and then figure it out. Yep. Um, and, and a lot of times we're just so afraid to do things and so, so afraid to try things that it keeps us bound uh, where we are. Yeah, especially in the beginning and you're trying to grow, just if you have enough lead time, say yes, you'll figure it out. Worst case scenario, you have to hire someone else to come in and complete the job. Like if I couldn't do a particular tent, I could have sub rented a tent from another company. We could have got the job done. We've never not gotten a job done. Um, and you say yes until you and figure it out. And then later, once you're quite large or you're making enough money, then you can say no all the time. I say no several times a day. No, that job's too annoying. No. Um, because I know that someone's going to call for that same equipment and it's not going to be on a deck. It's going to be in someone's nice flat yard. Right. And I mean, you know, that's what freedom is all about is being able to say yes when you want to and not because you have to, so to speak. So that's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, if you could start everything all over again, you know, what would you change? Hmm. That, that one's hard because it's like, okay, we're, I'm going to assume we're starting all over again, but now not going back to 2005 when I started. If I could start all over again, I would have paid people, whether it's another party rental company hours and hours and hours away, I would have paid to go work there. Because there was still, even though I worked in it, there was still stuff I didn't know. I would have also paid like business mentors because I estimate that I've lost $250,000 in one big mistake. And that is being a DBA versus an S Corp. Where DBA, you have 15% self-employment tax. And then you get taxed on top of that, your federal and state. Whereas if, if I was an S Corp, I would have been an employee of my company collecting a paycheck and avoiding a large chunk of that self-employment tax. I did not know that. I didn't know what I didn't know. And it was mostly like that basic business stuff. So I know I'm always hesitant to like, where am I going to pay this person? Blah, blah, blah. But $200, $250,000, if I could have just paid someone $300 to not have to pay 250, I would, that, that, I, I'd tell myself, do that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, that's that's one. It's funny as you say that because we talk about coaches a lot and mentors and just people who can, uh, I'll call, I call mentors time machines because they can help shorten your learning curve so you don't have to go through all that stuff on your own and try to figure it out. Bump your head on the wall a few times, but you could actually kind of move through it faster. Yeah, and it, it, there's a lot of people that give a bad name and I've kind of got a sour um, taste in my mouth about coaches and stuff and people who sell courses. And that's why like, I'm a horrible salesman on my course and my Patreon and stuff. Like I don't push it at all. My thing is I talked, I'm a douchebag who talks to the camera and I tell the truth and I just try to help you. And these are, and I don't even say these are things that I have generally, they find them through links or whatever. And it's up to them to decide if there's value based on what I've done. Um, but there's a lot of coaches and courses that like really suck. And it's, you know, so it puts a lot of people are hesitant. Yeah, no, I hear you. And by the way, um, I know that you have a course and I'll make sure I put that in the show notes so that people can go ahead and click on it because I'm sure somebody's saying, hey, you know, I want to learn how to do this. So uh, we'll definitely share that link with everybody. But, um, you know, over the years, I'm sure you've seen a lot of evolution in your industry. What are some things that you feel like have changed from, from now to the way it used to be? So. It's mostly efficiency stuff because the, the entire industry realized that, like I said, we're a material handling and logistics company. So there's more stuff to be efficient. Like before tents were just in white bags. Every bag was white. You either have some tag on it or, or write on it. Now there's companies that popped up that are making heavy duty, different colored bags. So I can go into the warehouse and all my orange bags are a certain size tent. I don't need to search for them. They're just that. Uh, there's companies that are making newer jackhammers because the stakes, you can put the stakes in with a sledgehammer, but it's way easier with a jackhammer and faster and saves you a lot of money. So it costs 4,500 bucks up front, but it pays for itself in a few months. Um, they, there's this machine called the Tent Ox. It's a, like a forklift for tents. It's got all these attachments to put in stakes, pull stakes, put up center poles, just a bunch of crazy attachments just for tents. That came out in the last few years. That's like $80,000 to buy. 
but it replaces there's it replaces a bunch of crew members. There's a company who they were brand new two years ago, and their first year they decided to buy that. So that could just be the two of them and their tent ox instead of the two of them and four employees. And to me, that was a pretty good investment. Um, so that kind of stuff is different as opposed to just manpowering it and hustling. Right. If somebody were to, I know you have a course, but if somebody were to say, hey, I'd, I'd like to get into that business, where would you say is like probably the first thing that they should start? And would you say it's expensive to start or is it? Very- no, it's it's actually not. So you could start for like under $3,000 and that summer you'll make that back. So any rental item costs or rents out a tenth of what it costs to rent out. Sorry, I messed that all up. The purchase price of it correlates to the rental price of being a tenth of the purchase price. So if what you spent was $3,000 on a certain item, you're charging $300 when that goes out. So you could get a tent and the tables and chairs to go under it for around 3,000, some companies up to like 5,000. And you can make your money back that first summer and then everything else you keep putting in and you buy your second tent for the next summer. And then you just keep going and going and going. And eventually you're not using any of your own money. You just use your initial money and you just keep building and building and building and building. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty low startup. The, these are assets, right? Like when you're on TikTok and YouTube, they're saying, you know, you got to buy a, buy houses and rent them out. Get yourself an asset. But who's got 40 grand when they're 22 to put down on a down payment? Right. A house is an asset for sure, but tables and chairs, that's an asset too. But more people have a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks to get started. It's just a different asset, but it's the same thing. Absolutely. Especially if you know how to put it to work for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So definitely good stuff. Well, I know you're also the author of a book called um, 101 Real World Side Hustles, right? Tell us, tell us about that and how that came about. So I was not joining TikTok for a while. Um, I just thought it was bouncing boobs and dancing memes and stuff like that, you know? So I'm like, all right, let me join TikTok, see if there's any people on there talking about like businesses, ideas, side hustles. So when I joined, I'm not seeing any of that. I'm seeing drop shipping. I'm seeing, you know, affiliate marketing, which that can be good. I'm seeing go to Etsy, type this in, they go to Fiverr, do this, and you never have to do anything for the lazy people. I'm like, this is, re- this is just dumb. Um, nothing's here. So I was like, I know a lot of businesses. I've started a lot of businesses. I've thought about a lot of side hustles, put tons of research into them. I got friends all over who have, are making money in weird ways that no one even knew. So I was like, I'm going to point the camera in my face because I've already been doing the YouTube. So I'm okay with that. Uh, so I started pointing the camera in my face and talking about ways that people are making money and real ways. Some people on TikTok, they don't believe. TikTok's vicious, the comment section. Um, but it's like, no, this is real. Like this dude's making money doing this. And so then that actually, that, I, I say I accidentally blew up because I don't do anything for it. I don't put tags. I don't particularly edit that well. I did recently like make all this behind me to make it look better, but uh, mostly it's just me pointing a camera at my dumb face and saying what I know. Right. And I mean, but, oh, but anyways, sorry. <laughs> so then the book came out of that. That's all. That's where we were going. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I love that because, I mean, some people, they, they just appreciate somebody who's candid and authentic and just tell it like it is rather than a whole bunch of fluff, right? Yeah. But I, even when I when the book published, I told everyone, well, I waited until I got my copy and I showed people on TikTok. I'm like, this is the book I made. It's got 101 side hustles in here. I'm not showing this to you for, for you to buy it because every single idea in here has already either been a video on TikTok or will be a video. Um, so I wasn't making it, you know, the TikTok video for the TikTok audience to buy it. Um, this is more like someone was going to stumble across this on Amazon. But uh, but then a bunch of people from TikTok bought it. And I felt like embarrassed that they did because it's like everything in there you're, you've either already seen or will see as a video. Yeah, well, you know, that's what pe- people pay for convenience and the fact that they could actually hold it in their hand and see it and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I mean, I, I enjoyed uh, this uh, this interview here, and I love all the stuff that you're doing. And congratulations on all the success that you're having. How can people? How can the viewers reach out to you in case they want to get connected to you? So uh, on YouTube, I am the Tank Guy, and if you want to watch 2,000 videos, you'll basically learn the party rental business. 
It's going to take a long time and it gets you about 70% of what the course is, but it's free and I don't mind. I'm a horrible salesman. YouTube's free. And then I got my course with more direct. It's startapartyrentalcompany.com. And then my TikTok mostly talks about side hustles and business ideas and business concepts, like what business you're actually in. And I do sprinkle intense stuff in there. And that is a real world side hustles. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I think this has been great. And uh, I can't wait to just see what, what you have more in store for in the future, because I know you're going to do some incredible things. So it's been an honor to have you here. And um, thank you for, for your time. Thanks for having me on, Eddie. No problem. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for listening. Um, definitely feel free to take a screenshot of this episode. Tag me in it on Instagram uh, or Facebook or wherever you find me on social media. I would love to give you a shout out. Hey, you might even get a prize. Who knows? But uh, excited that you had a chance to take a listen. I hope you got a lot of value. And uh, definitely feel free to uh, give us five stars as well as a review. Uh, show us some love and we appreciate you. God bless you all and see you all over the top.